uh, here it is. Matt Drudge predicted the future. Matt Drudge, top futurist. Here it is. It's been more than 16 years since Matt Drudge gave his historic speech at the National Press Club on June 2nd, 1998. At that time, he said that the mainstream media would go bankrupt, that uh, individual bloggers and researchers on the Internet were just as important as the New York Times. The controlled state-run media had a field day making fun of Matt Drudge. But today, their hubris has drained away and they're no longer as arrogant as they once were. Now we see calls for the FCC to regulate print news and online news. And we see establishment publications like Time Magazine, Newsweek, and the New York Times battling to keep from going completely bankrupt and imploding. It turns out pretty much everything that Matt Drudge said in that 40-minute speech has now come true. Well, Matt Drudge is saying a lot of things today that the mainstream media is still laughing at. Why do they laugh at people that have been proven right over and over again? Here are some of the most important moments, in my view, from Drudge's speech. And we're also adding headlines from over the years to show just how much of what he had to say came true. This is something new. This marks the first time that an individual has access to the news wires outside of a newsroom. You get to read all the news from the Associated Press, UPI, Reuters, to the Moral Cain, the Moral Cain uh, Agency French Press and the Chenoa. I'm a personal fan, fan of the Chenoa Press. Uh, and time was, only newsrooms had access to the full pictures of the day's events. But now any citizen does. We get to see the kinds of cuts that are made for all kinds of reasons. Endless layers of editors with endless agendas changing bits and pieces so by the time the newspaper hits your welcome mat, it had no meaning. Now with a modem, anyone can follow the world and report on the world. No middleman, no big brother. And I guess this changes everything. More than 10 years after breaking the Clinton Lewinsky story, Matt Drudge remains more powerful than ever with his website, thedrudgereport.com. Matt Drudge is a legend on the internet. Every journalist and politician in America reads his website on a daily basis. When radio lost out to television, there was anxiety. The people in the radio business were absolutely anxious and demanded government stop the upcoming television wave. Television was very nervous about uh, other mediums coming forward, cable. The movies were didn't want sitcoms to be taped at movie studios for fear it would take away from the movies. No, television saved the movies. The internet is going to save the news business. I, I envision a, a future where there'll be 300 million reporters where anyone from anywhere can report for any reason. It's freedom of participation absolutely realized. First of all, you disrespected me, this badge, and my department. You understand me? When I'm talking to you, you shut your mouth and you listen. Did I not give you a warning? You gave me a warning. Okay. I have a right in the United States. I know my rights. I don't give it. I give it. You mean the board? Obviously, your parents don't put a foot in your butt quite enough because you don't understand the meaning of respect. You see this? Yes, you see this. You see I took this. the board. You have a problem you with it? I have a problem. Then bring your parents down. We'll discuss this. All right. Go for it. Have you been there for the ceremony with uh, the cremation of care? Uh, frankly, that's, uh, that, uh, I don't think that's something I need to talk to you about. Really? That's right. Well, I'm Alex Jones, and I snuck in there in 2000. I'm the guy that blew it wide open and got the video. It's been on national TV. Well, I just respect you for that. You do? I do. But there's a lot of big public officials going in there. You don't took, we deserve to know? You, you took an under, I don't know anything about you, and I don't know anything about your film. But if you go in there with an understanding, you violated that understanding by releasing that film, and I don't respect you for that. Really? 
but you, we have public you, officials. I'm sorry, you took an understanding when you went in there that you would not do that film. And you did, did you have an understanding when you went in there? No. Did you crash it? Yes. Yeah, and it has no trespassing signs there too, doesn't it? No, they put them yes, up after. Sir. Oh, I'm I sorry. I just walked in. I'm sorry, sir. I've been there before. I know what I want the circumstances are, and I'm sorry you uh, violated the understandings. That was not that was not a gentlemanly thing to do. But what about the ritual? Is the ritual gentlemanly? <laughs> Sir, everything. Uh, they, you, I, I, don't, I don't owe you this comment. I oh, know. I appreciate you, you, you. You have. You. This is what's called ambush journalism, and I disrespect you for that as well. So thank have you, you ever and goodbye. Been in the ritual? That's none of your damn business. Oh. Right. Oh. Listen. Listen. You go around and and make understandings with people and violate them. You, you ambush people on the streets, and that's, that's inappropriate form of journalism. If you wish to practice that, that's fine. But don't ask others to respect you for it. If you want to, you, you can do it. You're a free American, like anything you want. If you want to be uncivil and rude and ungentlemanly, that's up to you. But don't expect the rest well, of us to say, oh, well, you're there, one. Mr. Gergen. I'm sorry. Nobody sets policy in there. We try to be gentlemen, and obviously, you don't belong there. Weaving spiders coming out here? <laughs> yeah, that is a three-pointer. Woo! What's up, man? How are you doing today, sir? Good. You a U.S. citizen? That's my business. Well, it's our business to ask. Are you a U.S. citizen or not? You can ask. That's fine. Uh, and you have to answer me, Ralph. Mm -hmm. I have to detain you until you can either tell me that you're Well, I don't have to answer you because I have uh, rights as an American. Sir, go ahead and pull over there. We're behind that other vehicle. If you do me a favor. That's, no, thanks. I'd like to just go on my way. You can go anyway as soon as you tell me if you're a U.S. citizen. Well, you know, I, I didn't know that I have to go around proving that I'm a citizen. Do I need to, like, show my papers like the Nazis? or I'm not. Am I immigrating somewhere? Or? Is this Mexico? or the United States. Just answer the question yes or no. Well, let me ask you this. You know, is this Nazi Germany now? I have to show my papers? Hold on a second. Get out of the vehicle. I am in my apartment, sir. Go back inside right now! I am inside. I'm, this is my door. I'm standing right inside my apartment. Sir, I'm inside my apartment. Uh, the First Lady of the United States recently addressed concerns about Internet during a cyberspatial Millennium Project press conference just weeks after Lewinsky broke. She said, we're all going to have to rethink how we deal with the internet. As exciting as these new developments are, there are a number of serious issues without any kind of editing function or gatekeeping function. I wonder who she was referring to. Mrs. Clinton continued, any time an individual leaps so far ahead of that balance and throws a system, whatever it might be, political, economic, technological, out of balance, you got a problem. It can lead to all kinds of bad outcomes, which we have seen historically. We, we are in an information war, and we are losing that war. Would she have said the same thing about Ben Franklin, or Thomas Edison, or Henry Ford, or Einstein? They all leapt so far ahead out that they shook the balance. No, I say to these people, faster, not slower. Create. Let your mind flow. Let the imagination take over. And if technology has finally caught up with individual liberty, why would anyone who loves freedom want to rethink that? If you're an undersecretary at the Energy Department and you're doing an interview and you say one thing, you know, during you could end up uh, being on the front page of Drudge. Anyone saying anything can um, can get caught up in in the spin cycle in a way that is very damaging. To, you know, it, it, will, it hurts what we're trying to do on daily basis, but also is very damaging to that individual person. And we cannot hide our bad news stories. Bad news gets out one way or the other, and we must come to terms with telling the bad stories as well as the good. When bad things happen, the American people should hear it from us, not as a scoop on the Drudge Report. The editor of Civilization magazine, Adam Goodhart, wrote a great op-ed in the New York Times talking about is this really something new, this type of fast reporting, this competitive, I'm very competitive, I'm part of the headline generation. 
he maintains it was a going back to our foundations when the press was found in quite a different atmosphere when the press would report that the president's mother was a common prostitute brought over by the British Army. Imagine if someone did that now. We have a great tradition of freedom of the press in this country, unpopular press. If the first lady is concerned about this internet cycle, what would she have done during the heyday when there was 12, 13 editions of a paper in one day? What would she have done with that news cycle? That's the foundation. That's what makes this club great, is the tradition. And I think we have a tradition of, uh, of uh, provocative press. And that I maintain that I'm the new, new face on that. I'll take that for a season. But a lot of the stuff I do is serious stuff. I was first to report that the encryption was missing from a Loral satellite, for example, a couple weeks ago. I, I didn't see the main press reporting that one. Uh, so I, not everything I do is gossip or bedroom. To the contrary, I think that's just an easy uh, label to dismiss me and to dismiss the new medium. But uh, I, I'm, I'm excited about the launch of this internet medium and I, I get the freedom of the press belongs to anyone who owns one. Tonight, the Drudge Report and InfoWars are once again in the crosshairs as the U.S. government seeks to regulate conservative media via election laws. Jones is the wildly popular conspiracy theorist whose stories often make their way from his website, InfoWars, where on any day you can find headlines about vaccines, mass fluoridation, and the 9-11 cover-up into the so-called mainstream GOP establishment. Alex Jones was a champion of Clive and Bundy from the very beginning. Because he's saying he'll do whatever he has to uh, to not be, uh, you know, have his grazing rights stolen uh, by these pirates. Drudge elevated the story and it made its way onto Fox News' airwaves. Next thing you know, so-called mainstream Republicans are calling people like this patriots. A conservative website that's called The Drudge Report uh, pulled out all the stops today to promote a big new bombshell video. Today, the leading conservative website's headline was this. Civil War Senate to go for handguns. I'm an addict. I, I'm a Drudge addict. I, my homepage is actually something else, National Review, but uh -oh. I find myself going to Drudge uh -oh. all the time Fancy. because as a communications professional, you can tell what's going to come down the pike. If there's a siren on Drudge Report, you're like, oh boy, better go knock on the Oval Office door and let them know what's going to happen. Walkergate. Yes, we're calling it that. It's the latest Hillary conspiracy theory that set the internet to blaze after the Drudge Report questioned whether Clinton was using a walker in in this People magazine cover photo. Well, internet pioneer Matt Drudge created a firestorm over the weekend, tweeting, just paid the Obamacare penalty for not getting covered. I'm calling it a liberty tax. But a White House representative firing back, tweeting, flat lie, no fee for previous years. Scary how much influence he once had. And then the White House shot back and said, you know, made some cheap shot about, oh, he used to be relevant. Are you kidding me? Matt Drudge <laughs> used to be relevant? Let me give you the numbers. In one month, right, go on the website. 800, almost 810 million unique views on the Drudge Report. I guess that uh, a nice Twitter fight between the White House and Matt Drudge. Uh, people had suggested I start a mailing list. So I collected the emails and set up a list called the Drudge Report. One reader turned into five, then turned into a hundred. And faster than you could say, I never had sex with that woman, it was a thousand. <laughs> five thousand, a hundred thousand people. The ensuing website practically launched itself. Last month I had six million visitors and I currently have a daily average larger than the weekly newsstand sales of Time Magazine. Check out these numbers. About 33 million visits in just the last 24 hours alone. Almost 900 million in the last month and get this over 11 billion in the last year. Some people love him, some people hate him and the White House may fear him because they can't control him. Anyone, for any reason, can launch a website. Little to no money, internet connection, local phone. The modem lets you cover the world. The modem lets you read what's happening if there's an earthquake uh, in Alaska seconds after it happens. I think that's fun and dramatic, for free, by a medium that was built by taxpayer money. So, uh, perfectly realized. And uh, again, let the future begin. Any way you look at it, Matt Drudge is now a global icon. Not just here in the United States, but worldwide. He is an example of independent true media. 
challenging the Goliath state-run systems. Matt Drudge is a visionary and a futurist, and I admire him because he's a folk hero. He's a grassroots person who was able to basically leverage his instinct for the pulse of the people and change the way the world sees news and information. And he's also had the courage to not just carry Infowars.com stories, but countless other grassroots media stories and really change the narrative towards one that is more based on reality and empowering the people and liberty. Matt Drudge is classic Americana, and he's a great example, not just to our generation, but future generations to come. And when the history books are written on the info wars and the media wars of the 20th and 21st century, Matt Drudge's name will be right there at the center. Now, that's powerful broadcast over radio, but in the next 30 minutes, we'll post the video up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com, and I'm going to tweet it out. And even if you don't like Matt Drudge, you should understand, folks, that he promotes the entire political spectrum of thought, uh, not just libertarian or conservative ideas. And so many times, we wouldn't have beaten gun control legislation or other really bad things when the fight is just so close if Drudge wasn't there. <clears throat> Drudge has helped Infowars.com to a massive degree and you know, caused the White House to respond to what we're doing and what we're saying. And uh, overall, has fought against the police state, the surveillance grid, the cloning. Back when Drudge used to do a Sunday night radio show, I'd listen every time I could. Uh, and it was a more you know, calm, professional version of what I do here on air back at the time. I've gotten a little bit more professional over the years. But the issue is we need to get the people involved in media. I'm so dedicated to this. I've already skipped a break last hour, and I just skipped this break. That's how we fund the whole operation. It costs thousands of dollars every time I do it. That's how dedicated I am to this, is that I just, just can't stop working. I can't stop thinking. I can't stop trying to figure out how to not be a slave and how to expose that we knew the NSA was listening to people through their cable boxes 16, 17 years ago. I'm on record. We knew the smart meters were going in in many areas 10 years ago. We knew about the, the, the urban warfare gun confiscation plan 18 years ago. And the fact that we've been exposing it and you've been exposing it means we've held a lot of it off. Even though now it's starting to come to fruition, people always say, it's one of the simple labels to throw at us for, for non-thinking folks and propagandists who are targeting non-thinking people. Oh, where's the FEMA camp? Where's the New World Order? Where's Big Brother? Where's the... It's happening. Our government's funding Al-Qaeda. They're murdering Christians everywhere. There's total surveillance. Microphones being put up nationwide on street corners. Been going on for about 20 years, but now it's ubiquitous. It's going in everywhere. The flesh-eating bacteria, the, the, the diabetes doubling, tripling, quadrupling, the, the cancer rates exploding, the, the people's language shrinking, people obsessed with their smartphones. It's all happening. But there'll be a renaissance against all of that, and you are that renaissance. You, believing in yourself, starting a blog, starting a blog radio show, a vlog, starting a video uh, piece on YouTube, and not infighting like Cash Sunstein and the Pentagon go out with bots trying to stir you up with all the racist stuff they put up on both sides. But, but just sticking to issues, sticking to what the technocrats are doing, we are the vast majority. And the vast majority do want freedom and private property and do want true diversity of media. And I agree with Matt Drudge. We're going back to where every major city had up to 10 to 15 newspapers. Small towns would have two or three. Because that's how everybody got their news before radio and television got really big. And so you had reporters battling for the scoops, battling for the latest info, battling for the dirt. And it made us a much freer society. And people wanted that morning edition and that lunch edition, and that evening edition, and that late, late, or that extra, extra. You know what extra, extra means? It's an extra edition. 
The newspaper stands were just packed full of just, oh, my gosh, what, what happened here? What happened there? And if somebody was wrong, they'd get sued, and, 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 and there'd be court cases, and there'd be fights over it. And it was exciting. It was like the Internet. 1920s-type newspapers, 1900-type newspapers. Places like New York City had 20-plus daily papers or more. Dallas had more than eight Papers. It was down to two when I was a kid, now one. It was Dallas Times Herald and the Dallas Morning News. My mom worked at the Dallas Morning News. We're going back to that, and they don't like it, ladies and gentlemen. That's what conspiracy theory labels are. Oh, uh, InfoWars is questioning why the plane flew that flight path. Yeah, he wears a tinfoil hat. Boston Globe said the tinfoil hats are out. And Weird Al Yankovic came out and said the, the tinfoil hat people. Boy, how intellectual. You don't believe known wires in government. And so you got a tinfoil hat. Or you got Harvard studies that fluoride lowers IQ by about 10 points in children if they drink it for just a year. And sevenfold increase in bone cancer. I mean, what's their answer at the city council? They call me a tinfoil head up on the dais and make fun of me. And the local radio stations make fun of me and go, yeah, the nutcase that thinks that, you know, Martians are putting stuff in the water. No, Martians aren't doing it. The globalists are. The Nazis and the Soviets put fluoride in the water, and that's in two different Pulitzer Prize winning <sighs> literally I mean I mean it's just so stunning to see how they are denying all of this. And how they're saying, you just can't even ask questions. Well, we are going to ask questions, and you don't control the narrative anymore. And we don't believe anything you say anymore. And we're learning how the world really works right now, together. There's the headline. Weird Al channels Alex Jones, a conspiracy-laden Royals parody. Yeah, if you don't like royalty, uh, then you're insane to put a tinfoil hat on. That's base propaganda like you're a moron targeting you like you're a fool and you see the tyranny, you see the lies, and they just go, tinfoil. That's your intellectual response is to say tinfoil. And to make fun of people that think there's fluoride in the water. There is fluoride in the water. Now, before I go any further, please support this operation. It's also important, even if you don't want to be part of the new media, the new dominant media, the new free media, the, the open media, to support real media and to promote it tell people about it word of mouth, and to purchase products from the sponsors of our local AM and FM affiliates of InfoWars.com. To go to InfoWarsLife.com, we finally got in more of the silver bullet, haven't had it for two and a half months. It will sell out very, very quickly at InfoWarsLife.com, the best colloidal silver out there, bar none in my view, done amazing things when I've been sick, when nothing else worked. InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. We have a special on the fluoride shield that detoxifies a whole bunch of stuff and chelates with the nascent iodine survival shield 25 percent off both of those respectively and that special is going to end soon it's available at infowarslife.com or call toll free 888-253-3139you are watching the best of the Alex Jones Show, weekdays from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central. Watch live at InfoWars.com forward slash show or become a member of InfoWarsNews.com and help us take resistance to the next level.